Good evening, iyi akşamlar. I'm Osman Kibar. Uh, I'm the uh, CEO and founder of Samomet. Uh, Samomet is a biotech company based in San Diego, California. And we focus on developing drugs for various regenerative medicine applications. So we're uh, talking about drugs. For example, we have an injection that grows cartilage, we have some lotion that grows hair, we have another lotion that repairs tendons, so on and so forth. So at this point, uh, by end of this year, we're on track to uh, be in the clinic in human testing in 10 different disease areas. And I'm guessing that pretty much uh, most of you have never heard of us. And uh, that's by, uh, that's intentional. Uh, because we started operations in 2008, and for the first eight years, we have been in stealth mode. Uh, you know, if you, we never published, we never disclosed any of our data or any of our programs. If you were to go to our website, our technology page would take you to a broken Wikipedia link. And uh, for our chief information officer, we actually uh, hired a former CIA counterintelligence expert to make sure that uh, nothing uh, came out about us. And then, of course, uh, there came a time when we couldn't stay in stealth mode. We had to start talking at least to the doctors, to the medical community about our drugs. So we decided to start disclosing our data started presenting at various medical conferences. Thank you. We started presenting at various medical conferences. And once the cat was out of the bag, of course, uh, there was a lot of attention focused on us. A number of articles were written about us. Uh, and uh, for example, last year, we made the uh, cover of Forbes. And interestingly enough, that level of attention, uh, in our opinion, was all focusing on the wrong aspects of our business. For example, after the Forbes article, within 48 hours, I got 700 LinkedIn invites. And uh, all, you know, over the following few weeks, uh, I was probably offered a couple dozen awards and invitations to speak, etc. Of course, I duly said no to all of them because uh, one, I didn't know any of those people that were reaching out to us. Uh, but at the same time, we thought that all that attention was based on our financial success. You know, they were, everybody was talking about our valuation. Everybody was talking about our uh, future market potential. What we believe we were most successful with our company was the team we were able to put together and the culture that we were uh, subscribing to to grow the company. So uh, at some point, uh, our CFO, you know, when asked why I would never uh, go to any events and, you know, never speak at events, he would say, look, you know, Osman is not just media shy, he's actually media hostile. And I think the reason was more than that. It was because everybody was focused on the financials rather than our values. I just didn't see a point. For example, uh, after that article, uh, there was an interview request. Uh, the reporter came in, we spoke for two hours. We discussed all our programs, our technology, which diseases we're going after, so on and so forth. And, Every time she was asking a question, I was answering. At the very end, she said, OK, uh, you know, is there anything else that you'd like to discuss? And I said, yes, actually. I'd like to discuss the team we have here. Because without the team, we're not going to be able to execute on anything. And she looked at me, and she said, yeah, no, I don't care. So she ended the interview and moved on. And after that, I basically said, OK, you know, there is no point. I'll just wait for the media cycle to uh, you know, cycle through. And hopefully, there will come a time when uh, we'll be able to discuss what is important to us. And <clears throat> on that note, regarding the team, 
when we are growing our team, growing our company, the one thing, at this point at least, my primary focus is always on growing the team and the company that is a cultural fit and you know, the, our culture should evolve uh, with the technology, with the company, with the business. And <clears throat> that is why uh, when I was contacted a few weeks ago for this event, uh, I mean, at this point, I don't even read the invitations. I just say decline. I say, okay, you know, uh, when is the event? And whatever date they give me, I say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, too bad. I won't be able to make it then. Uh, but for this one, my gut said, hold on a second, you know, this may actually be different. So I looked, and I have to admit, this is my first time at, the, at this event, at the American Turkish Council. Uh, so when I looked into it, I saw that there was a lot of similarities, a lot of overlap with what I was focused on, what I value the most, and what this council is trying to accomplish. On that note, you know, I started thinking about the culture that I was raised in and the culture that I grew up in. I was born in Izmir. I went to middle school and high school in Istanbul to an American high school. And after high school, at the age of 17, I moved to the US and I've been here since then. And back in Turkey, when I was thinking about what Turkish culture is like, of course, every culture comes with its own pros and cons, right? Uh, and looking from the outside, you know, you look at the Turkish culture. Uh, us Turks, we love to disagree about everything with everyone. You know, uh, there's never any shortage of naysayers, even when there is no question being asked. But on the positive side, there's a very strong brotherhood concept. And, uh, you know, we have a saying, kare gün dostu, which is, you know, we may not call on somebody, we may not, you know, spend time with them, and it may be years and even decades, but if we trust, if we respect somebody and we call, themselves, uh, we call them a true friend, then whenever that friend is in need, you know, in his or her darkest hour, we're always there. We'll always back up there, uh, back up our friends. So I was able to capitalize on that very concept, even when I was, or especially when I was building my own company. Early on, uh, in my senior management, I have three people, all of them from the same high school. Two of them, my classmates, Third one, one year younger than us. So uh, the one that's younger than us, uh, he's been very ac accomplished on the finance side. You know, he was at Goldman Sachs for 10 years, then started his own hedge fund for another 10 years. He was basically you know, financially set for the rest of his life. And when the time came and I needed someone to help me grow the business, I picked up the phone, I called him, I said, Bro, I need you. Come on over. So it took me about 15 seconds to convince him. He just packed up his family and moved over to San Diego. Of course, it took me 15 seconds to convince him and about two hours to convince his wife. I had to call her separately. And then, uh, as we started growing, then we reached out to another friend of mine. Uh, he was a, a partner at Simpson Thatcher one of the most reputable law firms. He's actually sitting right there. He's avoiding eye contact with me. Uh, so when the time came and I said, look, you know, we need someone with a good head on his shoulders and who's gonna think about the law component of a business from every angle and be able to integrate. Sure enough, he quit his partnership and moved over. Then came the time we were preparing to get into the clinic uh, for human testing. I reached out to another friend of mine, another classmate. He was a professor at NYU, and he was the director of two different centers at NYU. He was actually running all of their musculoskeletal clinical trials. And same thing, you know, he, uh, we asked him to swing by San Diego. He stopped for a couple hours, 
We told him, look, we need a chief medical officer. And on the spot, he said, okay, I'm in, count me in. And then on his way out to the parking lot, he was thinking, ah, maybe I should you know, call my wife first before committing to this. Uh, so, but this concept of brotherhood is, runs very strong, and it's all a matter of trusting and respecting each other. Now, put that Turkish culture on one side. Then, uh, for my middle school and high school, I went to an American high school. So I was exposed to the American culture since I was 10. And after that, I moved to the US. And the way I chose where to go, you know, everybody looks at the rankings. I actually looked at the US weather map. And I said, OK, Southern California, that's where I'm going. So I went to college first in Los Angeles, then moved to San Diego. For a little bit, moved to New York. And first chance I got, I moved back to San Diego. So in Los Angeles, uh, when I started college, it was probably one of the smoothest cultural transitions, at least that I've seen uh, among my friends. Uh, you know, I never experienced a culture shock. Uh, I joined a fraternity when I didn't even know what a fraternity was. You know, my friends came in and said, okay, we're rushing, all right, let's rush. I went out and uh, joined it. And when I'm thinking of what the US culture is like and how it's different from other cultures, especially from the Turkish culture, sure, there's a lot of similarities. But at the same time, of course, you know, the cons may include, uh, okay, you know, the world view of uh, Americans are pretty US centric, right? We call our uh, championship series in baseball, World Series. When we listen to world news, it's all about what happened to Americans abroad. You know, that's what we call international news. But on the positive side, there is this lack of fear of failure. Basically, every American is a natural born leader in that sense. And I looked up the numbers. Uh, just recently, uh, I did a career day at my daughter's school. She's in third grade. So I had to dig up some numbers. And I was given some examples. For example, you know, uh, we landed a man on the moon. I actually went back and counted. That was space mission number 72. You know, the level of resilience, the level of perseverance, the lack of fear that you're going to fail and therefore not try in the first place, that just doesn't exist in the American culture. You know, I'm looking at you know, Kobe. Uh, I counted the number of uh, buzzer beaters, Kobe Bryant. He made 12 buzzer beaters in his, life, uh, in his career, but he missed 35 of them. When I looked at LeBron James, he made five and he missed 42. And yet, the 43rd, he doesn't hesitate. He still takes the shot. And every time, the idea is, it's not about whether you're going to succeed or fail, whether you're going to be the best in the crowd. But it's all about never hesitating to step on that field and to do your best, no matter what you're doing. So I got a, uh, the most I guess personal example that I uh, encountered was, again, in college, I used to play soccer. And uh, I was a loner to the football team as a kicker. So whenever the football team played, I would just attend the game, no practice. I would kick. And I mean, as a team, we were academically the best in our league and physically the worst by far. We would lose every game and by huge margins. So there came a time, you know, I went to one of my uh, friends on the team. I said, why do you do this? You know, why do you keep getting on that field and embarrassing yourself? You know, what's the point? So you know, he suddenly got very serious. You know, he grabbed my jersey and he said, we may be small, but we're slow. So I thought about that. Okay, you know, the point is not, you know, 
what your strengths are to win, but rather the lack of hesitation to get out there and do your best. And I think, you know, looking back, I find that one of the most admirable uh, traits of the American culture. So that's when it dawned on me, when I got this uh, invitation uh, to come here, that the way I have been trying to build and grow my company for the last decade is indeed a reflection of this American Turkish culture that I happen to grow up with, that I happen to be exposed to my whole life. So that's when my gut said, okay, you know, if you're not honored by this award, if you're not honored by this invitation, then you're just a vegetable. You know, might as well just pack up and go home. So thank you for this award and thank you for inviting me.